Those who believe in reincarnation will ask, what about past life beliefs? And even if I forget the idea of guilt, am I bound to follow the rules of karma? Since all is simultaneous, your present beliefs can alter your past ones, whether from this life or a quote-unquote previous one. Existences are open-ended. Now, with your idea of progressive time and the resulting beliefs in cause and effect, I realize this is difficult for you to understand. Yet within the abilities of your creaturehood, your current beliefs can change your experience. You can restructure your quote-unquote reincarnational past in the same way that you can restructure the past in this present life. The point of power is in the present. This experienced present also represents your psychic touchstone to all of your other existences. You are consciously aware of certain events and unconsciously aware of much more that in one way or another you are learning to bring into conscious focus. The same applies to all of your other quote-unquote reincarnational selves. They are unconsciously aware of your conscious experience as you are unconsciously aware of theirs. The interaction is constant, however, and in all of your presence, creative. You draw on their knowledge as they draw on yours, and this of course applies to personalities that you would consider future. You have a gigantic pool of information and experience to draw upon, but this will be utilized according to your present conscious beliefs. If you understand that the point of power is in the present, then you have an inexhaustible realm of ability and energy at your command. You must remember that beginnings and endings are realities only within your own system of three-dimensional life. The energy of your being exists outside of your system, however, and impinges upon it in your terms, becoming quote-unquote alive physically at certain points of time and space. Your own greater energy dips in and out of the space-time continuum as you understand it. As it does, its experience becomes physical. Within that system, then, it leaves a life trace. When you think in terms of reincarnation, it seems that one tracing exists before the other, but the entire quote-unquote chart exists at once with all the individual life tracings. Since these offshoots or life tracings each come from your entity, they are connected psychologically and in terms of electromagnetic energy patterns. Consider this analogy. Taking it for granted that you are indeed multidimensional, you can perceive only so much of your own experience at a time because of the characteristics of physical creaturehood. The three-dimensional system automatically specializes in before and after effects. You exist, say, in seven different centuries at once. However, the normal experience patterns of your temporal being prevent any comprehensive view of all of those lives in creature terms. Again, what actually happens is that the energy of your being impinges, say, at seven moment points into the three-dimensional system. At each of these points, what seems to be an isolated life is experienced. Just beyond those intersections, however, there is a more or less unitary and overall recognition of wholeness that quote-unquote rides above them. This represents the multidimensional entity that is both apart from and yet part of the separate life traces. You may have an existence in the 17th century, for example. To you, it would appear that the life was a past one, finished. You may believe that your current experience, with all of its abilities and challenges, is the result of that past life, yet both exist at once. The 17th century is not dead. You follow a one-line pattern of history, pursuing certain actions as reality and identifying with these so completely that they are all you perceive. Other probable actions are always occurring, however, and are quite as valid as the ones which you happen to choose and thus experience. Your reincarnational selves have as many probable lives as you do. Your beliefs and actions in your present alter quote-unquote their experiences, as each of them, in their presence, change yours. If you see these reincarnational selves as one entity, then this becomes quite natural. The whole self is changed by all of its comprehensions. Each portion of the entity is unique and independent, and through its own beliefs, determines what it will accept in terms of influences within its immediate life situation. The great miracle, in fact, is that each consciousness, whatever its degree, is itself and no other, 
even while in the unending fields of interaction it may be a portion of another, as a city is a part of a state or an individual is a part of a family. In terms of personality as you understand it, the individual chooses the abilities he or she will have and the life challenges. In the present then, each person has unlimited opportunity to draw upon the entity's energy and the understanding and powers of all of its parts. It goes without saying that any human being possesses the latent ability shown by a great artist or athlete or statesman or philosopher. Within creaturehood, there are wide ranges of abilities. These may be seldom used, but they are there as practical ideals that can be expressed within that system. In the same way, every individual possesses the abilities of its entity in latent form. These too serve as practical ideals, but in a different kind of context, for you have other centuries to play with and many existences instead of one. You often excel in situations that utterly escape you at a physical level. These accomplishments still operate through the focus of your present, since you are physically aware of but one line of probabilities, so the meaning of many dream events escapes you. But in dreams, you often do work quite as valid as any performed in the day, and in the dream state, you meet and interact with your own reincarnational selves. Actually, I prefer to think of them as simultaneous selves. In the dreaming condition, there is a great interchange of information with these other portions of yourselves. Your physical brain automatically converts such data into temporal terms so that many of your significant remembered dream experiences are already translated by the time you recall them. Otherwise, they would make no sense to you at all. In many instances, you travel outside of three-dimensional reality while dreaming, but your experience must then be recalled in physical terms, or you would have no memory of them. Even your dreams, you see, must come through the point in the present, of spirit's intersection with flesh. Dreaming does represent an open channel through which the material environment is transcended. There are as yet undiscovered bizarre changes in the brain during certain dream states, an acceleration that quite literally propels the consciousness out of its usual space-time continuum into those other realities from which it comes. These serve as points of unity, wherein all the various simultaneous selves meet, and certain seasonal rhythms are involved here in physical terms. As your spaceships to the moon must wait for the most effective overall conditions before taking off, so in other terms are there rhythms having to do with energy. Practically speaking, this means that certain times are more effective than others for these communications in the dream state. Privately, they often involve illuminations and sudden advantageous decisions. In mass, they imply great historical changes. These interchanges represent periods in which the soul and flesh meet under the most optimum conditions. There are individual variations and yet mass patterns. The energy of the personal self constantly comes from the entity. There is not just one intersection of soul with the flesh, therefore, but at the least a constant series as you would think of it. Because of the characteristics of energy as it impinges upon the three-dimensional system, there are fluctuations always involving your present. These cycles merge at several points, so that you do have major changes in all areas in any span of 2,000 years. For other reasons and in a smaller context, the month of August is highly significant in a 25-year sequence. Within this, a seven-year period is important individually. These are simply rhythms depicting the greatest impact of spirit as it intersects with flesh and time. In physical terms, the tides and geographical aspects are involved, but these are quote-unquote effects, having to do with curves of energy of which consciousness is composed. These rhythms are minutely but perfectly reflected in other ways. The seventh dream in any given night is the most important, not that anyone is counting. The greatest abilities of a personality may often be brought into physical expression, however, because of certain rhythms that are not understood. In a manner of speaking, you can say that the energy of an entity is dispersed, striking the space-time continuum at certain angles and always bouncing back, but the energy is always in contact with itself, even while it impinges into physical existence. In your terms, the energy springs back in the dream state, but it must always pass through what you think of as the window of the present. 
this bouncing back of energy into itself is the meaning of the dream state, in which experience that is basically non-physical is embarked upon and is then interpreted as a dream through the brain. Your deepest dreams involve non-material comprehensions, however. Your dream, though clearly remembered, is already a translation of the physical brain. The information then enters your present, where it biologically and mentally colors your life. It is also automatically transformed according to your beliefs, so that it makes sense to you at least to some degree. In energy terms, think of yourselves as particles, and of your experiences as the waves that flow through the particles and give each of them its sensations. When you are physical, you are a particle. The form of the particle defines your experience as the waves permeate it, but your greater reality cannot be expressed in such limited terms.